Hey Aries, how y'all doing? Welcome. We're going to be taking a look at the first half of April general reading here. So in your meditation, if anyone is familiar with the children's book, Harold and the Purple Crown, we are about to go there. So it's okay if you're not, I'll, I'll walk you through it. So in that book, essentially, Harold is given a purple crown and is tasked to create the world that he wants to live in by drawing it with this purple crown and whatever he draws is created and that's his reality, right? So it's, it's sort of a story of empowerment for kids about how you can create your ideal world, your chosen reality, your preferred set of given circumstances, right? It's a beautiful story. But then I saw the Aries Collective as Harold. Um, th there was this sort of like a treadmill that was made of water like where the treadmill would normally be, like that moving band on the machine, was a river. And I saw Harold trying to fight the tide of this river and go, go, go and create this world, but couldn't and got caught up in the stream and ended up just holding on to the other sides of the treadmill, like in, like holding on for dear life, just going, ah, getting drenched by this water. And then it stopped. And after that experience, he... <laughs> came out of it and was looking at what he had drawn on the wall with the purple crown and instead of dis instead of, instead decided to erase it all and have a blank space and then I saw you as the Aries collective as Harold sit down in front of the wall with his back against the wall um, you know in lotus position and just meditate and be still and be open and to allow his perfect reality to come to him as opposed to him creating it. It almost feels like moving from the magician into the high priestess is the best way that I can think to put it. So we're going to take a look at your cards here. But before I do, a quick note, I am trying out a new format and um, I'm going to come to you here with the meditation, a full mug like I've been doing to welcome you and, and talk to you about, you know, what I've seen for you guys. But then we're going to turn it over and make it all about the cards where you're able to see the images and the symbols and the whole layout. Because oftentimes you guys see things in those cards that are personal synchronicities for you. And I want you guys to have the best of both worlds. So please let me know in the comments what you think of this new format. Secondly, um, I've been talking to you about my Facebook group. I would really love for you to join it if you haven't already. It is so wonderful. It's a place for like-minded people, spiritual people, lovers of all things supernatural and metaphysical, and everyone in between to get together in a safe, inclusive space and ask questions, talk about astrology, ask questions about tarot, talk about prophetic dreams, any and everything that you could think of. It's a beautiful way for me to connect with you guys more personally as well. And it's, it's just, it's such a beautiful, supportive space. So I absolutely would love to see you over there. The link to sign up is in the description box below. And now let's go ahead and take a look at what your cards are for the first half of April. Hey Aries, let's go ahead and see what your animal energy is for the first half of April. What is going on? Ooh, this is great. Okay. One of my personal favorites. So we have the mouse here. This is a really beautiful, um, often, you know, underappreciated energy, to be fair. Um, and first of all, let me say, I meant to say it a bit earlier, happy birthday season to you, Aries, by the way. And that Herald in the Purple Crown, Crown meditation could also be an aspect of you making a wish for your birthday or thinking about what you want to manifest. I feel like there's a special message in terms of, you know, a beautiful balance that can be achieved between being clear on what you want, but then allowing it to come to you in its own way and time. I feel like that is an important part of wish fulfillment that doesn't get talked about as much. So I like that that's coming up for you. Now, now, the mouse most closely equates to the two of pentacles in the tarot, right? The two of pentacles is about balancing one's work and personal life and that, you know, ever elusive multitask that, you know, can be difficult, but when we get it right, it feels really, really good. Mouse medicine is also about attention to detail, right? Being able to see things up close that other people's, other people's, that other people cannot. So this is definitely about attention to detail. 
So I love that we're starting off with that for you. Let's go ahead and see what's going on. What is going on for Aries? First half of April. Oh, I love this so much. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So we have the eight of wands here. So first of all, fire energy. You guys are fire signs. We're in your fiery season. This is very auspicious already. Eight of wands is an upward movement and ascension and an escalation, right? There's also an aspect of the eight of wands that speaks of messages, communication, offers, contracts, writing. So it's interesting. The Herald and the Purple Crown and the, and the creating and the writing on the wall, right? You know, this also speaks of a certain escalation or ascension from one state of being to another. So although the wands are traditionally about the actions that we do or do not take concerning the work that we love, this also can speak to um, an uptick in the intensity in a good way of our personal relationships and also our feelings around where we're going, what we're doing, and how we what progress we feel like we're making uh, towards those goals. So it's a really beautiful, I love Eight of Wands. It's a beautiful, beautiful energy. It really is. This is when you're really feeling fueled by purpose, feeling like you have energy and that you know where you're going. Okay, <laughs> it's beautiful. I knew this was going to come up for you because it wanted to come up when I was shoveling. So you have the two of cups here. Eight of Wands and the Two of Cups. You better work it out, birthday wish. Two of Cups. Th this is such a beautiful energy between kindred spirits, between like-minded souls. This can absolutely be romantic in nature. This, These are also two best friends we see here on this key. Two people who have come together and share a way of thinking and seeing the world. You know who's coming to mind right now? And I don't think it's ever come to mind before when I pulled this key. But I am seeing um, Sir Ian McKellen and Sir Patrick Stewart. Uh, they did a production of Waiting for Godot um, some years ago in New York City. And I'm that's coming to me right now. But what's really interesting about that parallel is that in Waiting for Godot, uh, these two characters are waiting for God to arrive and God never shows up. Now, what's interesting about that is in your initial meditation with Harold and the Purple Crown and, and you putting the action in to create something and this is what I want. And then like the current, the river of the treadmill kind of caught up with you. And it wasn't until you released and surrendered into it that you were able to see that what's really in your highest and best good is best achieved by making its own way to you and its own timing, right? I feel like you might have been limiting yourself in terms of what you've been manifesting and what you have imagined is possible for yourself. I feel like you've been thinking about things in terms of what is possible, what's probable, what's the smart move, what's the wise investment. And I'm really hearing here that you have an opportunity uh, to allow things to manifest for you that are outside of the realm of what you thought was possible or achievable in this life. And that is really exciting. That's really exciting. You know, Two of Cups also speaks of an inner and outer harmony as well. But this is really happy partnership either with someone else or within yourself. This could also be you holding a cup up within to the universe going, let's do this. Let's manifest this. And this river, this is this just this river of tea here, right? And I'm, I want to talk about briefly, like it's a funny saying, but like the tea is known as the truth, right? But then we have an actual tea, the tea that we're sipping. There's an aspect of inner truth here that's coming to light. I feel like you're being asked to, through the eyes and under the influence of the mouth, mouth, mouse, really allow yourself to see the specifics of what is working and what is not and what could truly be possible for you. I'm hearing like expand your view. Two of Pentacles. So we've been talking about this with the mouse, right? We talked about the fact that this was a successful multitasking of your personal and professional lives. But I feel like this is also considering your options. Do you see how he's walking on the land here? And then we have like the gushing ocean next to him of like these two. Uh, I'm, I'm hearing that saying it's a storm in a teacup. I'm really hearing to reconsider your options and really take another look at what is going on for you. I feel like there's a better way or a higher potential that you may not be seeing because you're looking over here when you should be looking over here. Where is your point of focus? The mouse asks. Where is your point of focus? There's something about that. I'm almost hearing to slow it down a bit or, you know, like 
allow yourself the time and space, right, to be surprised or get inspiration. But I am hearing it slow down a bit. Okay, it wants. It's like telling you to slow down a bit in your birthday season. It's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Interesting. Eight, eight. So to clarify the eight of wands, we have the eight of swords. Now, the eight of swords is very much about that mental entrapment that we put ourselves through that only we can free ourselves from. It's analysis paralysis. It's worst case scenario thinking. It's a lot of that mental stress and tension, right? This is not a good feeling in the mind. And then we have the eight of wands here. Now, these are two counter energies. This is rising above and beyond and breaking through. And this is staying within contracted and trapped. I feel like there's a freeing of your mind that wants to happen. A freedom of the mind. What's interesting is with your open meditation, opening meditation Harold you know was in the driver's seat remember we said it felt like it was moving from the magician to the high priestess from active manifesting and putting your will upon something to allowing what wants to come to you to be revealed in its own way in time through stillness and openness I feel like that's what this is mm. two of cups two of cups Knight of Cups. All right. Let's get into it. <laughs> really nice. So Knight of Cups is beautiful water energy here for water energy. So Knight of Cups is a beautiful energy around doing work that you really love to do and that fulfills you in a way. But it, it's a little bit different um, than the wands. The Knight of Cups doesn't necessarily care about, you know, if they ever make any money or what happens with it. It's just something that you do for pleasure that makes you intensely happy. It's something that you would do even if you didn't get paid for it, right? It's that level. Knight of Cups also speaks about being connected to your emotions in a certain way where you are living a heart-centered reality. And now it's interesting too with the two of cups, we we're coming from a sense of, you know, heart space and really allowing your feelings to direct you as to what steps two of pentacles you take. And what's interesting is that we saw that water treadmill and then allowing yourself to surrender and release into it. And as a result, gifting yourself a blank page upon which anything could happen. I'm really hearing that the key here is, is listening to your feelings and allowing them to lead and guide you. Don't fight the tide. Don't try to put your will upon things during this time around what you're manifesting, what you're wanting, what you're thinking of, any questions that you have. Your feelings are the way in. They're the key. That's the ticket, right? Two pentacles. <laughs> I mean, it just never stops. So we have the Ace of Cups, which is the mega feelings key. We just talked about that. So Ace of Cups is that big source of emotional, you know, inspiration. It's the emotional feel goods. It's intuitive insights. But it also speaks of, because it is an Ace, it speaks of fresh, brand new starts. And also that, that sense of like... um. What's the word I'm looking for? Like, not just like emotional detoxification, but rebirth. Rebirth. It's an emotional rebirth. I feel like you could be in a process of considering like one way of life or another. Do I want to keep working or do I want to retire? Do I want to continue with my work schedule or do I want to spend more time doing what I really love to do and, and maybe make a little less money but be a lot happier? right? What is this? I feel like you're considering your options and then you're being tasked to really allow your feelings to inform you because here's the tea. Here is the real tea. For an example, if you're considering like, you know, what more of this, what less of that, do I want to continue down this road? Whether this is a relationship, a work path, whatever this is for you, the tea is if you follow your feelings, even if something has to go as a result of that and make way for it, ultimately, not only are you going to be happier, but you're going to be more abundant because that is your feelings aligning you to your highest and best path to which you can receive the most from, right? That's, that's what it is. When we allow our feelings to inform us, not overwhelm us, 
not trick us into like, you know, worst case scenario thinking like when the mind and the feelings get together and like work havoc, but we can come from a place just like you guys were in an opening meditation of like full on lotus position, balance, openness, and allow our feelings to inform us without fighting the tide. That is, that is our higher aspect of ourselves that is directing us to a place where we are really meant to be and can experience the most out of life right? I feel like this is directing you to a certain pleasure point and you're being asked to allow it to do so. And back to this two of pentacles with the mouse and the, I feel like, you know, are you seeing your situation through a lens of what's possible or through a lens of this is how it's always been. So this is how it's going to be. Right. I'm really hearing to like flip the way that you're looking at something, rearrange your focus and kind of reconsider what possible really looks like. I mean, it is your birthday season, right? That now is the time to like make these wishes and and really go big and, and really allow yourself um, to consider a kind of reality outside of the confines of what is feasible or financially smart and really think about if time and money or no object, what would I do? And then allow that to inform you. Because I understand that time and money are objects, right? But that's a clue for you. If time and money were no object, what would I do? What is the first thing that I would do? What's the second thing? What's the third thing? And that is Harold in the Lotus position as well, is thinking from not, not the place that he's come from in terms of like, you know, how to make smart decisions to, to get like long-term, you know, dividends or returns or whatever. It's about allowing yourself to, you know, creative think, creatively manifesting, right? And allowing yourself to kind of build that moat between, you know, where you've been and, and what you've been able to manifest so far to where you could only ever dream of being if you allowed your mind to really go there, right? I'm getting an image of it being your birthday and you're taken to the bakery and and you're told to pick out your cake. You're going to pick out your cake and we're going to put a candle on it and you're going to make a wish, right? And there's all these different types of cakes and, and all these different options, right? And you choose a little... Actually, is there cake on this? <gasps> there is cake on this. Oh my God, perfect. Okay, a visual aid. I feel like you're taken to a bakery and you have all these options of things to choose and you choose this little cupcake to put a single candle on because it's it's financially wise and, and you really just need one cupcake and, and right? But then there's like this whole like big old cake, this is a slice of it, that you could have chosen but you were thinking small, that you were thinking from, you know, what you've known before, right? And I feel like the universe is saying to you, go for the big cup, go for the big gulp. You know what I mean? But again, it's it feels less about going for it and more about allowing it to come to you. Really, again, that question for your birthday season. If time and money were no object, what would I do? I feel like there's going to be a lot of benefit and happy surprises out of that question for you. I would also recommend around that journaling can be so helpful and insightful and fun. Um, you know, just automatic writing and journaling and allowing your mind to be free and untethered and allowing yourself to just go there. So remember with that Harold in the crown as well, and just allowing yourself to kind of free think and kind of spitball. If time and money were no object, what would I do? And then just go and allow your mind to just really tap into your intuition, your emotional core. And I feel like there's going to be a lot to be revealed as a result of doing that. And you'll be glad that you did. Let's go ahead and get an Oracle for y'all. Feeling like the vintage. You know, while I shuffle, I do want to point out the fact that the only swords key that you got which again, rules the realm of the mind, is the Eight of Swords, which is not a nice key. It doesn't feel good at all. So I'm really hearing with that that your mind is not necessarily your best friend uh, during this time. 
that you're, again, your best friend is your feelings, is your heart, is your uh, capacity to dream, right? And imagine. Let's get an article. Let's get an article. Oh my gosh. Are you ready for this? Look, it's enchantment. I could talk about all the things in all the ways. So enchantment, first of all, where do I even start with this? This is literally a mermaid in water. We're talking about that. We're talking about, look, look at these ships wanting to come into you on the sea. And then we have ships here, right? Uh, so the sun, and then we have like a golden pentacle up here in the place of the sun. Also, she's a freaking mermaid. And we've been talking about allowing yourself to dream and think big. Think outside of the realms of practicality or, or what's probably going to work or happen. And really imagine yourself going there. Believe in mermaids. Enchantment is about allowing yourself to tap into that childlike aspect of you, like Harold from Harold and the Purple Crown, and really believe that anything and everything is possible. Do not choose the little cupcake. Choose the big seven-tier, wonderful, rich luscious perfectly decorated cake and eat it all yourself <laughs> you know what i mean not little dreams like big dreams like seven layer dreams seven layer dream cake okay seven layer dream cake <laughs> with a mermaid on it but that's what this is allow yourself to follow your feelings and and really pay attention to what enchants you this, that's what this key is all about. That's what this oracle says in the book. This is all about if time and money were no object, what would I do? That's what she's thinking about. Right? That's what this is. Believe in those mermaids. Believe outside of the bounds of what has been previously possible for you. And in doing so, manifest some truly amazing and exciting new realities for yourself. Because you are only limited by your own restricted vision. Pour some Ace of Cups on that thing. <laughs> and dream big and eat well. All right, Aries, I am wishing you guys a very, very, very happy continued birthday season. I so hope that this helps and resonates. If so, please do let me know in the comments below. I love reading your comments. I, I really love hearing from you guys. Also, please let me know in the comments below if this format works for you. Let me know what you think about it, really. I, I really want to hear from you. I, I take your feedback quite to heart, and I, I so appreciate you. Um, also, please like, please hit that like button right about now. Hit it right now. Please like, sh subscribe, yes, and share this video. You doing that allows me to be with you in a more regular way. So I would really appreciate that help. Um, and lastly, but not leastly, just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You there watching this. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. And most of all, and as always, thank you for being you. And be well. Until next time.